We are live, sir. You. This is episode 92 of the Beef and Bitcoin podcast with your host, Brett and CH. Today's topics. Uh, today is Bitcoin Pizza Day, May 22nd, 2020. I almost can't believe it, man. Ten years ago today, the uh, Bitcoin Pizza transaction happened. Unbelievable how much time has gone by. Um, also this week, we had some OG Bitcoiner move some coins that haven't been touched since 2009. And uh, obviously that spread rumors like wildfire that Satoshi moved his coins and is going to dump his bags on everybody's head. Uh, that that scared people, but we cans, we cans. And then, you know, that got me thinking, what's the future of FUD look like? Because I noticed so many people came out with articles explaining how uh, those 50 coins that moved were not Satoshi. And they, you know, they gave their explanation. Um, and But they jumped all over that really quickly. And the dip was bought up um, pretty quickly and pretty strong. So it, it got me thinking, all right, you know, what's in store for us in the, in the coming bull run when things are going nuts and, you know, we're seeing mainstream news articles come out of just the most ridiculous FUD you've ever seen. And I'm, I'm really curious on your take of what they're, what they're going to go for this time <laughs> around. But, uh, yeah, dude, happy Bitcoin pizza day, dude. Um, I would actually like to enjoy some pizza to be honest with you. I'm pretty hungry, but, uh, yeah, it's a pretty interesting time again. Here we are again, uh, you know, 12, what, 11 years now into Bitcoin pretty much. We're getting close yeah. to it. I mean, it's yeah. coming in hot. It's pretty crazy thought, you know, I mean, you and I talked about recently, you and I have now been in the space for over three years, which is which is pretty crazy. But then you think about there's people who've been here seven, eight, nine, you know, years, right. ten years obviously, but it's just it's pretty incredible. And how much, you know, shit they've been through. Like <laughs> Oh my god, totally. Dude, like, I can't imagine yeah. being into Bitcoin any longer than I already have. <laughs> Dude, if you've if you've if you've been in this since like twenty thirteen or twenty twelve, good for fucking you. Or even earlier, obviously. Like that's that's I mean, uh, this just like your your life. You you know what I mean. Like your life changes after that. Like my life is totally not the same from what it was like four years ago. It's just not. Yeah. If you jump down the rabbit hole, you're just not the same person when you start coming back out. It's uh, it's definitely. <laughs> definitely a wild time but it's also i think why we love it right that's the whole point of the podcast if if it weren't that much of a game changer or life changing i don't think it would be worth talking about and uh you know it, it makes sense that we that we're here talking about it every week um but yeah dude uh just for anybody who hasn't been around long enough to know of bitcoin pizza day maybe this is your first one you found the podcast in the last year or so um it's it, it's a really important day right because it is it's probably not the first transaction that paid for something with Bitcoin, but it's definitely the most notable. And, uh, you know, 10 years ago, Laszlo uh, Hanyich made an offer on the Bitcoin talk forums to pay 10,000 Bitcoins for two large pizza, for two large pizzas. And uh, this guy, Jerkos from the UK was like, yeah, sure, I'll take the 10,000 Bitcoins off your hands. Uh, they were worthless at the time, right? They're essentially worthless. It was worth like 40 bucks worth of Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, the crazy part is today, do you know how much that those two pizzas would be worth? It's a stupid amount. What is it? 90 million. Yeah, yeah it's over it's 90 a, it's million. A, it, yeah, yeah, it's a stupid, <laughs> absolutely ridiculous amount of money. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, I think it's insane, but it's really interesting to think about because it's the same thing that we talked about the other week with like the Bitcoin stimulus. If you threw the 1200 bucks into Bitcoin, how much would it be worth, you know, whatever time the, the bot's tweeting? The pizza pizza day is like the same exact story, except from on a way longer time frame. And you can see how much the, those two pizzas would be worth today. And it's just like 90 million. If you're Laszlo, you're probably like, holy shit, I can't believe, you know, in in at that time, he was one of the first people who was um, he like invented GPU mining. So he was just mining coins and, uh, you know, made the offer. But. I think it's important because it, it kind of does mark the the use of Bitcoin as a medium of exchange. Um, and it was just really cool to see it happen at a time when Bitcoin barely had any value at all. It was just somebody said, eh, I'll take the Bitcoins off your hand. And they, they were in demand enough to accept them um, as a medium of exchange. Uh, so uh, I don't know. Do you think do you think it's like an iconic uh, day? Oh, dude, wait, look at this comment. 10,000, that's quite a bit. You could sell those on BitcoinMarket.com for 41 US dollars right now. Good luck on getting your free pizza. Amazing. 
<laughs> it's unbelievable. I mean, you, you got to give the other guy a ton of credit, right? For accepting, uh, accepting the Bitcoins. I mean, it was almost, you do it for fun. It was as an example, like, oh, let's test this out. Like, can someone accept Bitcoins for the payment of a good or service? And like, it, it, it happened. Somebody was willing to do it. And that was, that was the start. I think that was one of the, you know, it's the most notable transaction for the the Bitcoin circular a great miles economy. Dude, has been a great, dude I, I used to love trolling for it. Like I used to be in forum shit like this. And this is just great. Just like a decade ago, a great milestone has been reached. <laughs> like just the ridiculousness of this. And you don't, you don't even realize what it like, you know, you look back on this. From like what it meant of, at the time. It, didn't, yeah. it was, you know, it was, it meaningless. was, a, it was a meme. It was it's a, a meme. meme. Yeah. Exactly. It's a meme. It's worthless. It doesn't mean anything. $41, no big deal. It just blows my mind that it it's come so far, but it, it got me thinking about some other topics and I wanted to get your take on them. It's like, you know, you, you see that you're Laszlo, you look back and, you know, I guess you can regret it, right? 10,000 Bitcoins. It's, it's unreal to think about that many Bitcoins, honestly. I can't even fathom. But, um, you know, it, most people end up regretting spending their Bitcoin. At some point, you always look and you're like, fuck, I can't believe I bought that stupid T-shirt or, you know, whatever. But uh, at what point in time do you think people will not regret spending their Bitcoin? I mean, anyone who sold Bitcoin above 10K, you know, any time in the past, whatever, few years – is probably pretty content for now, you know. Like people who, you know, they're, you know, those people like post on Twitter, like, okay, I'm selling one Bitcoin here at 20k, or like selling a few here, like, you know, they're pretty content there. I mean, I, and I know it's not that much because obviously there's people who trade, trade, pardon my language, but retarded size. Like, I think I sent you something about that recently, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's ridiculous when like that's what people understand. Like markets are driven by people who have large pockets, like. And we see it in Bitcoin. Bitcoin's a small enough market that people with tons of millions of dollars. I mean, that can happen in any market, obviously. But in Bitcoin, right. they can just you know prop markets up or drive them in one direction or another. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. No, it's, it's uh, yeah. I guess you made a good point. It's it's like you know, I guess if you sold above ten thousand or close to the top, yeah, maybe you're you're not doing too bad. And I even I heard, or you wouldn't regret buying something with Bitcoin, right? I heard an interesting story of somebody who bought a Ford Raptor like close to the top in twenty seventeen, mm. and then they sold the Raptor like near the bottom at you know call it four thousand, and then bought. so you basically cashed out. You you bought a Ford Raptor for call it I don't know two two bitcoins forty grand, and then you sold it for how many bitcoins at the at the bottom and yeah. it like year end or dude, you know the beginning of 2019 probably, probably spent it, like four bitcoins on it to be honest dude those things are going the new ones are going for like 75 was, 80k dude it's yeah, yeah so it's like four BTC, used, but dude. yeah for sure oh well, oh i didn't know if you bought i thought you were talking about the new raptor well either either way yeah it's just no. an interesting way to all of a sudden you're you're you turned your ford <laughs> raptor into a store of value for like 18 months is that how you're gonna is this how you're gonna trade future future bitcoin bull markets are you just gonna every time you feel like there's a top you just sell and buy a car and then sell it back and then buy a bottom it's a funny later. because i i i know i'll fuck it up if i even try to do that and uh the other the other issue i think i would have is if you need to deduct the taxes that you would owe and the capital gains and then offset that with what you're buying i think it gets complicated and i'm such a shitty trader that i don't know if it's worth it but it does make sense for those who or you know you know i, I hold some gbtc for the exact reason to sell it so i don't know what do you maybe at the next top you're like uh maybe i do want to get a, a house or a car or whatever and i'm willing to peel off something to uh to get a different asset or whatever and then I don't know. It, I can't believe somebody actually pulled it off, but I had never heard of that. You know, you turn your Bitcoin into other assets while it's overvalued, and then you dump those at the bottom and, you know, get more BTC. It sounds easier said than done, obviously. Yeah, so a crazy thought. Um, if this six month candle can close above like 13,250 or whatever, that's going to look pretty r ridiculously bullish. So by July 1st or whatever, j June 30th, you know, it. 8 p.m. EST or whatever. Uh, yeah, I mean, sign me up, dude. Dude, that happens. And I know it seems ridiculous right now, but that's like five, you know, what, five weeks, 39 days and two hours. It's a, it's a long, long time. time. It's a lot of time for things to happen, especially 
you know, when you look at like 2017 or even uh, 2018 or 2019 summer, excuse me, where we, we have days where you go up 13, 15%, like, you know, thousand dollar days. Yeah, no, people just aren't people aren't ready for that. And it's funny because I guess as we move on to the next topic about those coins from 2009 that were moving, um, uh, just to explain quickly, you know, 50 bitcoins from a Coinbase transaction from 2009 had moved just, I don't know, a couple days ago, not long ago. And that caused, I don't know, a $1,000 decline in a few hours. Everybody thinking that Satoshi had moved his coins, um, which there was a ton of a ton of articles that came out basically trying to disprove that. And to be honest with you, if you even just think about it for a second, I think the like 40 coins went to an exchange and then the, the change was, you know, coin joined and stuff like that. But I don't think the person in Bitcoin with the absolute best OPSEC, which is Satoshi, because you nobody knows who it is, would be dumb enough to send his coins to an exchange to try to make a few bucks. Uh, I just don't see Satoshi giving up his privacy that easily. OTC deal, bro? <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe. I just, like, you'd know those coins. You'd be able to just track them. I just... It, it it just seems like a seems like a bad idea, but it's also and you have this uh, this article up from Jimmy Song that he wrote and you know I don't I don't want to get into too much of it because it's super technical and they were looking at the it's, nonces of it's all too the different much for me I just yeah <laughs> basically like you know there were more people mining in 2009 than you think and anybody who decided to run the software on their computer and literally there was a, a button that said generate coins and you click that and you were you were mining right away mm -hmm. um there were a lot of people out there who were who were doing this and it's amazing to see that coins are actually still moving or th coins haven't moved in 10 years and every time they do move it's it's gonna be like a like a little celebration almost it's like holy shit i can't believe somebody moved some coins um and you just you start asking more questions like, well, how many other coins do they have? Did they, did they mine other blocks? Um, you know, who was it? Do, do we know them? Are they in the space? Are they, are they speaking at conferences and we'll just never know who it was? I mean, it, it's, it's amazing to have the transparency of the Bitcoin blockchain, but then also the pseudonymity of you really just don't know who it was at the end of the day. I just think it's, it's really cool to think about. Yeah, no, it's pretty. Uh, it's a pretty crazy thing that it's a it's a public ledger. So you know everything if you can put a face to it or put a name or something. Uh, you know who it is technically. I mean, obviously, as you said, we don't know who Satoshi is, but you know if those coins move per se, someone you know someone obviously is moving them around. So yeah, I, I can't believe somebody could hold their keys like that long. I, even or if know, they just lost them hypothetically. Well, you know, that's an interesting topic because on one hand, there's a, there's this big assumption that there's a lot of coins that will oh, just I, never move again because sure. of the point, because like the, the keys are lost, right? Either you threw out your hard drive or, I mean, storing Bitcoin was not easy in, I mean, it's still not easy. So you're talking about, it was really a shitty experience from 2009 till probably the first hardware Dude, wallets it, came out. It was like an average person would definitely have some difficulty trying to figure it out. So a lot of coins are definitely lost. Think about the time though. If you started mining in like March 2009 and, you know, Bitcoin doesn't do much for what, a year and a half really? Yeah, it had, it had no price for a year and a half. Yeah. So you literally just mine these nothing for a year and a half and don't think of much of it. And then what, maybe it finally gets a price and starts moving up. But even then, you know, you don't think of much of it. Because think about how long, you know, you're talking 1,000 days and it still hasn't really done much. It's, it, it's I mean, insane. maybe by then, by 1,000 days, it had more of a price. But you know what I mean? That's still a long time. That's over three years. Or close, you know, a little over, under three years. I mean, even if you're you're holding at your market price was whatever you paid for the electricity to mine the coins, right? And and the price breaks one dollar, and you're probably like, "Holy shit!" Yeah. Imagine if you sold those coins, sold yeah, all yeah. those well, coins at you ten like, bucks. You you you're up you're I don't genius, know, thousands dude. of yeah, percent. Yeah. Well, think about it. You you mine ten thousand coins, and you sell them at ten bucks. You spend a hundred k, and you think you're a genius, and then fucking Bitcoin goes to a thousand in twenty fourteen. Right, and I think that's the point that um, people really don't appreciate is that everybody thinks they're too late. And then in hindsight, I think 
even you're if you're buying the top in 2017 at some point sooner than you think you'll realize how early you actually were getting in and uh i i know that's pr- it's probably controversial to say just because like it's not that like we're at 100k or anything yet and I'm, I'm speculating that we would be but everybody thinks they're too late and i just think it's so so early in the grand uh in the grand scheme of things that even buying tops it'll It'll just be like a funny story that you tell. Are you telling and, me to buy tops and sell bottoms? I mean, <laughs> everybody's way better at selling, uh, buying tops and selling bottoms. That's just I know. human it's, nature, right? We're, we're, I'm fucking sick at it, believe me. Um, <laughs> Dude, it's, it's the worst. I mean, it, and then really, and I think about every time the boat meme. Just you, you know, you know, it is. It's inevitable. The the price is gonna pull back anytime you post it. Oh yeah. <laughs> anytime. Yeah. It's just it doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't know. Do, do do you think those um Satoshi's coins, well, they're not Satoshi coins, but these anytime old coins move, do you think we're going to get a pullback like we did um like we did the other day? And the reason I ask is because as soon as it happened, I got a text from my coworker who like doesn't really care about it all that much saying, "Oh, did Satoshi really move his coins?" and I'm like, "No, dude, he didn't." <laughs> but um I thought it was funny that he brought it up. So I, I don't know. Do you think this is going to keep happening every time old coins move around? I hope not. I hope, well, but then again, I mean, that's not the worst in the world because if it's, if it's like a complete normie hearing this, I think that just means that there it's either A, it's getting disseminated more, or B, there's just more attention coming to the space. Probably a combination of both. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. It kind of, you know, kind of transitioning into the next topic, and it goes along with that, is it's, I didn't think old coins moving around would all of a sudden be FUD, but it was knocked out pretty quickly. I mean, I think if this were 2017 and old coins were moving around like that, it would have been huge news, a huge sell-off. Uh, Satoshi's coins are moving, he's back, the whole thing's a scam, blah, blah, blah. It would have gotten overblown big time. And this time, while it was still news, and I'm surprised that I even had a coworker text me about it, um, you know, it, we kind of shrugged it off and the dip was bought up. Um, but it does make me fear the future FUD, right? What does FUD look like during the next bull run? Um, I have my, I, I, I'm speculating a little bit on what I think the big FUD will be. I think, I think energy mining FUD and energy usage will definitely be huge. And if it's not a big piece of FUD this time around, it will definitely be FUD. Uh, during the bear market for sure and into the next one because I think that's when I mean hash rate's just going to continue to go up right and I, I could really see there being a big attack on the on the energy usage FUD but what do you think do you think we're going to see a, a ton more FUD and if so uh, what do you think will be what what's your biggest fear to see FUD uh, I mean I think the usual stuff like the Bitcoin can be hacked is, is going to be a stereotypical one I mean theoretically yeah, you can get coins stolen, but the hacking part, as we've talked about before, you need a lot of money and a lot of power, you know, to be able to do it. So, good luck, I guess would say for now. But I mean, there's what what else did we hear in 2017 that you know was in 18, I guess too. Uh, you know, the banning it is always a big one, uh, and I think China ban, China ban, right? Oh, the China ban. Yeah, China ban might be done, where no one's going to care about that anymore because it's happened so many times. Um, Although I am concerned about Bitcoin being banned just from a a short term, like fuck, I don't feel like living through a huge pullback of um, either a rumor that the United States is banning Bitcoin or something like that. And I it, I definitely try to make sure I keep myself in check that it's a very real possibility. I mean, Executive Order sixty one hundred two happened where um holding gold was illegal and it was confiscated and you didn't have a choice and like you know totally that can happen um and i think the only way to combat something like that is um to get bitcoin in the hands of as many people as humanly possible especially people rich people Uh, i don't know how other how else to put it you want bitcoin in the hands of um, politicians you want it in the hands of very rich people who get a sizable position who don't want to give that up like a Paul Tudor Jones for example if his 2% bitcoin position all of a sudden turns into 
I don't know, $500 million worth or even a billion dollars worth because he took a $100 million position and it realistically it could it could get um, up that high. Um, you're sure as shit going to spend a hundred million dollars of that paying lawyers and greasing whoever you have to grease to make sure that you get to keep those coins. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, pretty, uh, insane. I, you know, again, I, as time goes on, I think just, and you talk about the Lindy effect, I think just more and more people get attracted to the space and they see the use case for it. You know, the ability to just send money, a remittance anywhere at any time is huge and it's just frictionless is what it is more than anything. Yeah, I think people underestimate that um, it's it, it's for the transactions that you're not allowed to make, right? And I, I know that maybe for you and I it doesn't really matter as much, right? The even though I hate sending wires, the experience sucks. Yeah. And Bitcoin's so much. It's a, it's a 10x improvement, or if not more than that, because I can send it on the weekends, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I don't need to ask anybody's permission to do that. Um, unless you've ran into that issue, that's the only time when it could really kind of piss you off. Or if you send money back home to another country who's, um, you know, maybe it's more difficult to earn a living in those countries or they suffer from inflation. Uh, you want to send money back to Venezuela, Argentina, Mexico, I don't know, pick your place. And you use Western Union, right? You use the, you the, wrecked, the legacies. Right? You're, I mean, you're talking – anywhere between 10 and 30 percent per transaction and if you're sending a hundred bucks and it's going to cost you right. 20 or five bucks to send and the, you know your family member only gets 75 it's just for for what what a waste um you know having something like bitcoin that you can use um while it it might be early for such a use case to be widely adopted right it's not like you hear everybody doing that very rarely probably um, it's just it's possible and and you can do it today and uh, I'm glad that it works but it's just such a big use case that's overlooked and I and I hope that to combat you know to stick on the topic of future FUD and what that looks like um, if someone's really attacking Bitcoin in a negative way that it's uh, for criminals and blah 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 I think it would be nice to turn that around to someone who says Bitcoin's only for criminals and say oh so are you trying to say that um, immigrants who come to the United States and want to send money back home are criminals and like that kind of do it diffuses that FUD almost instantly because hmm. those are the same people that someone who would say Bitcoin's for criminals uh, like try to say that they're sticking up for them right so you, you've got to really do like reverse FUD and, and attack, you know, the legacy system. And well, you know, if you, it, if it was done your way, um, that same uh, person is going to have to spend 30% to send money back home to grandma. So is that what you want? Is, do you want to take money out? You know what I mean? You just have to totally turn it around back on them. Um, and I think people are going to get better at fighting FUD. I, I hope I get better because I dealt with a lot of bullshit in 2017 oh. and 2018. Oh, I'm just, sorry, dude. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. No. It was super infuriating. So that's that's a good word for it. Infuriating, just de just dealing with normie talk. One would say, yeah, dude. Like I don't know how many times you can hear about the about the criminals and all this stuff, and it's like, it, 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 if anything, criminals prefer the U.S. dollar by a large margin. It's their favorite way to conduct criminal activity, actually. Yeah, and it, it's, it's not even you know, close. <laughs> it's like yeah. not even close. <laughs> it's not, and no one even talks about it. It's not even close, dude. It's not even close. Yeah, it, it's. I don't know, but I'm trying to think of some of the other fud that I'm a little worried about um, this time around. And you know, I guess really, it it's banning. I'm not so worried about the criminal stuff anymore because eventually there's going to be a time where everybody knows somebody who's into Bitcoin, and you're going to yeah. be like, oh well, my my cousin's not a criminal. You know, it, what's the big deal? Or things like that. So I'm hoping that that goes away. I also, the one that scares me is just the, the energy mining FUD because we saw how big the whole climate change thing was, was being pushed down everybody's throat, not for Bitcoin, but in 2018, 2019, and even in the beginning of 2020, um, how, you know, that's a very controversial and triggering topic to a lot of people. And, uh, that's probably my, my biggest fear with that, but the good news is, is that you have so many companies who are trying to partner with 
um, energy producers. And, you know, the oil and gas industry is my favorite one because you have uh, those folks who are dealing with struggling oil prices and they are heavily regulated to the point where they can't even um, flare the gas that uh, that unused energy when they're you know, doing oil and gas production and they, uh, they're hit hard with that. And the more they flare, the more they get taxed and they're limited. They can only do so much. And now you have companies who are figuring out how to put mining rigs in a box pretty much. And you take all of that flared, um, gas and methane that would have gone into, into the air and you, um, you use that to power Bitcoin mining rigs and all of a sudden you've monetized that. And, uh, you know, I heard this term, I wanted to tell you what it was cause I thought it was pretty brilliant. It's a digital pipeline. And when I heard that, I was like, oh, you know, that was a pretty heavy hit. You know, a digital pipeline is a really good meme to push back on the the energy FUD. I'm not, not going to lie. I pulled up Ethereum USD chart and not that I have an affinity or even like Ethereum, but it looks like it's going back to 360. So, <laughs> I'm just looking at, again, no bias on this, just looking at the chart. I mean, there's still two days to close on this, but still, I mean... It's it, we're gonna have all I know is like the next six weeks are gonna be a heck of a time. Into the uh, six month close into July, it's just across every asset class. Whether you're talking crypto and Bitcoin, uh, you know commodities, precious metals, and obviously stonks. Dude, yeah, it's no. I'm I'm telling you, man. I I don't think again. I I I don't know if I mentioned this to you, but I have like a few friends who've texted me in the past few weeks. All the same thing. I have to get rid of my bearish bias. And I told other people the same thing like a few months ago. They, uh, look at this chart. When you look at the S and P, it's just like I mean, you look at the two week. If you haven't been long for since the end of you know March, you've been wrong. And people have just been shorting every uptick. I had a few friends text me about it, and I'm just like, you guys are. I'm just telling them I'm just doing too much. I'm like, you guys are fighting something you can't fight. You know, again, it's who you know. It's about who has the money. You know, at the end of the day, every market's manipulated, and people hate accepting that. But that's just the reality. Every market is manipulated. Once you accept that, things get a lot easier. Yeah, no, I think that's a that's a really good point to remind everybody of because it drives I think it probably drives people like you and me absolutely nuts because you know and fundamentals the back of your mind, don't matter, dude. Nothing. Fundamentals don't matter. And that it 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 throws out um everything because you think you're you've researched a particular topic or industry so much and nope, you know you have nothing. a good handle on things and and uh you know profitability and cash flows matter uh and you're you're a good investor you're making prudent decisions and right. you know it turns out <laughs> it, it doesn't matter dude amd chart dude <laughs> six months like look at that dude that's price discovery like like i'd be foolish to think it doesn't go to 100 at this point you know just looking at this with no bias just because it, it, it's only like, you know, it could be two months away from there knowing AMD's movement. Dude, NVIDIA. Look at NVIDIA now. I, NVIDIA looked dead not too long ago. And now look at it. 360. Like, what the fuck? Oh, fuck your bearish and golfing. That's what fucking Jay Powell says to everyone. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. You think it's over? Nope. <laughs> and it, it's funny because it's, it's just... Six month bearish and golfing. Fuck you is what Jerome Powell said to everyone. Yeah, it, it's unbelievable. It's just when you think about all the credit expansion and, you know, even it, it, it's really not even that, you know, money's being printed and then used and purchased. It's the investors are going under the assumption that, well, they're just going to get bailed out anyway. What's the difference? Let's just FOMO in. Our dollars are becoming worthless. Let's just buy whatever we want and not even think twice about it. And it's it's scary because the fundamentals don't matter. I I, I guess that's the only way to really think about it. Yeah. Um, the fundamentals don't matter, and it could, it's gonna end badly at oh, some. Oh no, dude! I just when don't, you look at like you okay. know, I got. I mean, like, like let's look at a yearly chart of like Amazon. Like you know what what happens? Does this thing go down to two hundred in one year? Like how does this fall? What what does the yearly stick look like on this? When this comes to an end, Apple chart. What does it look like? Okay, at this point, if Apple goes down 50% in one year, and then say it closes down red, like that's 160 or 150. And then, but I mean, what happens when you go down, you know, 80, you know, 80% in a year? You're talking $60, dude, that would wreck everyone. That would wreck every pension. <laughs> yeah. Everything. 
I mean, it's ridiculous. Facebook's new all-time highs. Dude, Facebook had like, where is the, uh, I'm pretty sure it had a, I thought it had a huge engulfing bar. Oh yeah, it did. Yeah, July. He, uh, I guess technically didn't close all the way down, but still, again, you know, it's liquidity. It's all that matters right now. Yeah, there it's a is no other alternative. It is Tina. It is pile money into a lot of different assets and watch them go up in numbers. And again, I don't know how long this lasts. When you look what happened into Germany and like Austria, post, um, you know, and a few other countries, I think Hungary included too, after World War One, you know, the hyperinflation bouts didn't take, you know, it, it took like three years or four years for the whole thing to play out, if not more. When you include, you know, because during the war, they were already their I mean, currencies were inflating and other things were inflating, but the hyperinflation still took, like in Germany, you know, began in 1920s, 21, 22, and 23. I mean, two years of it. I mean, so, I mean, do you th I don't think people could be ready for that. You know, things just get retarded for a year. Even a year, dude. Think about it. The next year, just stocks just keep going up no matter what. You know, I mean, and then you think, I don't know how would that, how it would be like in grocery stores and stuff like that and other items, but, um, that, I mean, that that is not off the table. Like, I don't think people are ready for it, but who knows? Yeah. Red pill. No. Red pill time, baby. Everyone's going to get a fat red pill. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's, no, there's no avoiding this one. It's going to be like coronavirus. There's no avoiding it. No one can not talk to you about it. Like, it's funny. Like, I do. No, one's, no one talks to me about it. And then, like, by end of March, everyone, whether it's my parents, friends, family, I'm just like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Dude, it's like <laughs> it's like fuck. It definitely, yeah, yeah it, it makes it difficult. Um, it's like I feel like I'm dealing with it all day, every day, thinking about Bitcoin, thinking about the global macro, thinking yeah. about Non-stop. just <laughs> what's happening, and it's I don't know it. The, the next on one hand it's like yeah the next six weeks are going to be insane the next six months are going to be insane and the next six years are going to be insane and like they're all obviously the time's just going by right it's all happening kind of at once but it is so hard to think about what is actually going to happen in that time frame and i think in each time frame whether it's six weeks six months or six years uh we just i don't think anybody's ready for that no, no one is. It's it and and again, like you and I know, the inevitable end all be all of this is there is going to be pain. To what extent? I mean, here recently, I, I saw someone make a pretty good comment. There's people who like absolutely crushed it recently, and what what happened recently? Whether it was just online sell, you know, people with online businesses or something like that. Um, you know, like and uh, like I know a close family friend who's like, you know, they've just all they've been doing is nonstop. You know, he does international business, so but just nonstop on the phone all the time. You know, so there, there are people who are really taking advantage of this. And, you know, again, I, I think that's part of the reason probably you and I research what we do is, you know, take advantage of things that most people don't even think about. And it, it's, it sounds wrong, but it's not really what it's supposed to sound like. It's, you know, to understand like inflation, understand you want your money working for you in some set of form, like for you. It's, you know, holding Bitcoin to fight against inflation or for other people it's holding gold or holding stocks or holding real estate, et cetera, or having businesses that give you income, you know, and then if you want to eventually sell that business, you sell it for what EBITDA or something like that, you know, so. Right. Yeah. Crazy times ahead, dude. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's probably a good way to wrap this one up. Uh, yeah. Happy Bitcoin pizza day, big day. Um, glad everybody's still hanging in there. It can, I, I can feel the excitement in the air, honestly. And it's like, we're just getting ready for summer. Um, you know, it, it's great. I'm fucking pumped to keep recording. I'm pumped to see how everything starts playing out. Um, it's just, it's an exciting time. I, I, I can't describe it any other way. Yeah. Interesting times ahead is all I have to say. Get ready. Hang on. Yeah. Buckle up. That's for sure. <laughs> that's uh, all I have to say. <laughs> yeah. Make sure to like and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, leave us a review on Apple podcast. Uh, drop us a comment on YouTube. Send us a DM. Let us know what you want us to talk about. Definitely helpful when trying to come up with the, uh, the topics for the show. So we do appreciate that. And yeah, get outside. Enjoy the Enjoy it. Summer is coming. Um, yeah. Enjoy Memorial weekend. I know it will probably won't be up until I don't know when, but enjoy your Memorial day. If it yeah. is by then. Happy Peace. more of the Yeah, Peace. happy more of the <laughs> to our non-Americans. <laughs> <laughs> Peace.